Hey y'all, I'm out in the garden this morning. Oh, I just been drinking a cup of coffee sitting on my steps and I decided I needed to get to work. So I have just a little bit. Got a, this is a black cherry tomato growing on the edge of the, uh, of the panel where I have the cucumbers growing. It so looks like it's doing really well. Right here, down here, right here, I see a leaf that looks like it needs to come off. So let me get that off. I'm going to, instead of trying to just pinch it off, I'm going to actually cut it off. I've got my clippers in my hand. So let me get in here and just, where's the leaf? Is that it? That's it right there. Clip that off. Don't want to clip off something that's not leaf. Okay, pop throw that away. And here's another something right there. Let me get that one. Okay, get that out of the way. And, oh, it looks like this probably is probably blight. Let me get those. Go ahead and get the ones down near the bottom. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Well, look what I just did. Oh, no. I'm going to take that in. Maybe they'll ripen inside. Okay. So let's stop that. Now, I've already been working on this cucumber. This cucumber has a disease. Some kind of fungal disease. And I'm not sure what it is. But I've been working on um, clipping out clipping off the damaged leaves, the infected leaves, as much as I can. There's still a bunch. Let me look here, over here on the ground. See right there? Yeah, I've been putting them over here on the side. I'm not going to put them in my compost. Anything damaged like that, you don't want to put a disease in your compost. So burn it or throw it in the trash. But don't put it in your compost. So let's see here. Here's some more. You see this right here? That leaf right there has some, it's a fungal damage, some, some kind of fungal disease. The ones down here that are really dead. Uh, cucumber, it's just hard, it's hard to just pick these leaves off. So that's why I got out the clippers. So let me get this one. I'm gonna clip that one off. Way really down there. There we go. Let's toss that back there. And that one right there is coming from there. Look at that one. To so get the worst of them, I'm going to have to come around the back on the other side to, to get these. Look at this right here. Look at that. That's coming from down there. Alright, I'll attach right here. I think maybe that was... There we go. So I will finish that in a minute, but that's what I'm doing right now. Working on this cucumber. And it, apparently it's, out, it's outgrowing it's outgrowing the disease so the disease is more on the lower leaves so that makes sense it's like it's um splashed up from the soil like southern blight does but look at this one this one's looking pretty good there's not a whole lot of damage on that one and it's got a couple of pretty good cucumbers on it these are the slicers there's another one another one down in there so yeah a couple of good cucumbers on this one a few here I doubt if I'll have I doubt if I'll have enough to put up a whole lot of jars. But I'm probably going to use these slicing cucumbers as pickling cucumbers and maybe make a few jars of refrigerator refrigerator pickles because those are really good. So that's what I'm doing here. This the squash. I don't know what's going on with the squash. That looks really awful. It's I watered really well yesterday. So this could just be from, from dryness. I suspect it's maybe a de uh, disease of some kind. But the new growth coming on it is lo looking fine. I see some I see some new leaves coming out. Like there's right in there. That's looking okay. And the squash back there in that side looks fine. It's only this that's part this part right in here. And I'm wondering if it's the same disease that's on this cucumber that's gotten over here on the squash. I don't know. It's possible. But anyway, I've got other squash back in the back that are looking fine. These tomatoes are looking good. I see some blight in there There's on that one. You can see this one right in here. Look at, all, look at the yellow leaves in here. Yeah. So I need to get in there and get those out. And I'll do that in a few minutes. But... 
Look at back in there. I mean, those are beautiful. Those are that's my yellow. Uh, it's not crook neck. It's straight neck squash. And this is my Cherokee tan pumpkin right in here. Look how that is growing. That amazing. And there's a flower right there. It's, it's starting to bloom. Just keep, keep a good check on that one. Look at look how it's growing all over. And this is what I was hoping it would do. These iris in here. And I keep saying, I need to do this, I need to do that, and yes, I do need to do this stuff. But there's other things that need to be done too. Okay, now look at look at this. Look at this squash. See this? I mean that is definitely some kind of disease. And but it's got down there in the base, it looks like we've got lots of look at look at all the babies. This is a zucchini. So I think what I need to do here is just cut this whole thing back, way back, and see if, see if it will come, if it'll recover. It may, it may not. I'm hoping it will, because I would like to have some zucchini. So that's pretty much it for this part of the garden. Oh, I want to show you some, something else. Over here. Here. Move, puppy. Okay. Here's Kai. Look at my beans. The last garden update I did, the beans were not even to the top of the fence. But here, these are the rattlesnake beans, and that one's big enough to pick. So that would be the first one that's big enough to pick. They've just, well, they've, they've been blooming for a few days now, and I'm starting to get beans. Here we go. So this is good. Look at that. That bee back in there. Where is it? Way back in there. You see the bee on that flower? Spending a lot of time on that flower, isn't it? Must be some good stuff in there. So here we go. This is this is looking good. If anything is looking good in my garden, it's the beans. Down here on this end, on the other end of the beans, this little tomato. This is uh, another cherry tomato. This is the the yellow pear. And I've got little, I've got green tomatoes on here, so this is good. Back through the fence. I'm not in the garden anymore, but I'm on the other side of the fence. That, that's my yellow straight. That's my yellow squash, yellow straight neck. And over in there is another one. Now those are doing really, really well. So the problem with disease is up, is up farther, up closer to the, uh, to my patio area. Over in here. This red bee balm is still flowering. Isn't this beautiful? And these are these are old flowers. Yeah, I mean this is this one's getting ready to go. But they just hang on and they flower for such a long time. It's just a wonderful herb. And this little blueberry. This is some, this is one of my new blueberries. Well, I got this blueberry right here from um, one of my friends. She dug it. It was a uh, a shoot, you know how they come up from the roots. So this was a sheet from her blueberry and she gave it to me last year. And look at all the new growth that's coming on. This is really doing well. And then there's another one over there. And my comfrey down in here. That comfrey right there is flowering. Now this is not the good comfrey that doesn't doesn't um, seed. I grew these from seed. So before these set seed, I need to get those flowers off of it because I don't want to have comfrey coming up everywhere. I may collect a few of the seeds. That wouldn't be a bad thing to have in other parts of the yard. Just not right here. I don't want I don't want this whole garden area to be comfrey. So I'll have to take uh, take care with that one. The other one, the other comfrey that I have over um, in another area, is one that I bought as a root, um, as a root cutting. 
So this is my, the Genovese basil that, that I grew from seed is doing really, really well. And in here, in that area right there is lemon balm, and that's doing great. And then that is a basil right in there. That's either my lime or lemon. I don't remember which one. I put a lime on one side, a lemon on the other, and I've got a, um, a licorice in another area. And then back here, do you remember those, um, what is it? The coleus? Not coleus. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, that's doing really well. Phlox, of course, is just gorgeous. And right in there is a little, it looks like a little pecan tree that I'm going to have to get rid of. Right in this area right there is an elderberry, and I don't know if I want to have elderberries this close to this area. I may have to dig that up and move it someplace else. And then there's another one over there in that corner, and that might not be a bad place for one. I think probably that one's going to need to go too, because right behind it, on the other side of the fence, is a fig tree. Probably don't want an elderberry growing right there either, so these, these need to come out. And right there in the corner, I don't know if you can see, you see that fencing that's leaning up against the fence? Right in front of that is, is another little pecan tree seedling. Onions are still doing well. Celosia, that's what this is, Celosia. Why didn't I think of that? So here's some, this, these little ones right here are just not doing anything. These are the ones that I, I bought as a, like a six pack from, from Lowe's. And as you can see, I need to weed in here again. And that one right there is doing well. See, these aren't gonna get tall. This is a different variety. That little plant right there is a popolo. That's that herb, that Mexican herb that has a taste similar to cilantro. So that's gonna stay. This celosia back there in the back, that's going to be gorgeous. Look at that. I see other weeds that need to come out. And my catnip. Catnip is in full flower, I probably, and I've already, I, I collected it before it started to flower. I need to cut that back down again and get it to come back out and bush out. But you know, it's fine. The way it is, it's not going to die. This gorgeous mint, and in the middle of this mint, right here, it's a blackberry. Look at the thorns on it. Yeah. Struggling with the blackberries. This is interesting. Seedlings in here. Not interesting, it's just that I've got, this is some of the, oh, um, morning glories that I planted that I haven't haven't put on the fence and I need to get I need to get those out of these pots that are on the fence. Of course the dog sees me looking at stuff and wants to know what am I doing? Stop it Kai. No. He likes to eat well dogs do that. Right over here. This is the vitex, the chest tree. It's that, that's that little, the little rooted, rooted cutting. Rooted, not cutting. I, I layered it, and it's going to move the flower. The flower on it. Funny. So I need to, in the spring, I will dig that up, and I'm going to take that as a, as a plant down to the deep south gathering. And I mentioned that in another video. What else do we have? Um, not a whole lot. Over there against the house, those morning glories are growing up on, on the sticks that I've got up there. And this, I put that little piece of fencing around around the squash to keep the dog from stomping on it. Yes, he does. And the eggplant there are flowering, so that's good. The one that died, there had the fencing had been around this one. This is the one that the dog dug up. It didn't survive. Otherwise, except for these, 
squash that are looking horrible. You know, some things just don't make it. And the cucumbers, which are struggling, the garden's doing pretty well. Let's see, is there anything else that you need to see? Let me see what else. What else might there be? This is this is the chocolate mint that's doing really well over here. Chocolate mint, and in the middle of this, right in there, is the comfrey. And then over here is the perilla. Isn't isn't that that's just so pretty? And yes, this is an herb. And I'm so glad that it has come back from seed, and I hope it, I hope it comes back next year too. I probably will collect some of the seeds from it just in case it doesn't. And here's a nice big clump of grass right in the middle of all of this stuff. So there's not a whole lot in here that needs to be weeded. This is this is pretty good. One clump of grass right there and a few little other things. So this is not in bad shape at all. This area over here, on the other hand, I can't say as much for. Got a lot of stuff, but this I don't have any I don't have any veggies planted over here. There's my rose bush. One I got at Lowe's yesterday last year. Isn't that pretty? And it has a really good scent too. And not a whole lot of it's not very susceptible to the fungal diseases. So I would say it's similar. It's not a knockout rose. But it's like like the knockout roses are uh, disease resistant. This one is very disease resistant also. Uh, I'm trying to think. I can, I don't know. The, I don't remember the name of this rose. I don't like to grow roses that have disease problems. I'm not going to baby them. And I've talked about that before too. I'm not going to baby the roses. Here, more more flowers. That's a crinum lily. It's a red crinum. It doesn't look red, but that's what they call it. It's a red crinum lily. Right there on the outside of this big clump of iris. All right. Look here. I have um, done a pretty good job. Not perfect, but then again, nothing's perfect. But I've got all of these leaves. I cut down, drastically cut down the squash. And I've trimmed back pretty well the cucumbers. Not perfect, I still see some more that I need to get. They were hard, they were, they were still damp and it was hard to, to, pick, off, to pick off some of the leaves. Um, what else? Over here on the tomatoes, I have, I still see a few more leaves that I, that I need to get, the, the blight infected leaves on some of the tomatoes, I'm, well, now that I'm looking. But I've done a pretty good job over there too. I've gotten those. And in addition to that, I came in here and I cut down those iris again. So those now, the Cherokee Tan Pumpkins have a lot of room in there to sprawl. In fact, they're coming all the way over here. Now, there's my sprinkler that I used yesterday. And, okay, I don't know, you can't, probably can't see the tendril, but there's a stem of the Cherokee Tan Pumpkin coming all the way over in front, in front of that little buckeye tree. So, that's, those are going to be doing good, I hope. So, I've, I've done my work this morning in the garden, and I'm ready to go in. But I wanted to show you my progress. And as we're looking at this, I'm seeing bees working on the cucumbers. You can see these. A uh, little bit, maybe. You see the bees. Bees and the cucumbers, so that is very good. I saw a bug. Tell me if you can identify this bug. Now that I've got a picture of it, maybe I'll be able to identify it too. But I don't know what it is, and I suspect that's probably one of the reasons that the squash was doing so badly. There you go. So again, bye y'all, and I will see you next time.